Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with another video in the series, Dave's Faves. These are just my favorite recordings of all time, the things that I would not ever allow to leave my collection, the things that I cherish and listen to when I have time and the chance to revisit my absolute favorites. And in this case, boy, am I going to take a trip down memory lane. I mean, this is serious. For you listeners who are not in the United States, please bear with me because this one is just, is just a oozing with nostalgia. And if you're not nostalgic, you should just listen to this because it's damn good music. It's Graffet's Grand Canyon Suite. Now, people tend to sneer at Graffet's Grand Canyon Suite. Why? Well, because he was known primarily as an arranger, as the orchestrator of Rhapsody in Blue for the Paul Whiteman Band. And as a result of that, no one takes him seriously. He also wrote one of the most awful piano concertos in the history of mankind, which didn't help his reputation. And after the success of the Grand Canyon Suite, he wrote a whole pile of similar such things, cataloging, the cattle cataloging, cataloging, a sort of American travelogue. And none of them were as good or as popular as the Grand Canyon Suite. So he really was kind of a one-shot wonder. But so what? There are lots of one-shot wonders. I mean, nobody criticizes Albinoni's Adagio because he's a one-shot wonder. And Albinoni's Adagio is a heck of a lot less interesting and less musically sophisticated than Graffet's Grand Canyon Suite. So there you go. I mean, there's no, other, no reason we shouldn't love it. And it is wonderful. It's just marvelous and tuneful and glitzily orchestrated. It has a reputation here in this sad country in some ways, of being a kid's piece. You know, it's something that if you're lucky, your teacher will play you when you study American history so that you get some pictorial sense of all the stuff that's out there because the U.S. is a big country. And unless you live out in the West, you have no clue what it actually looks like until you go on vacation and visit it. And so, you know, the Grand Canyon Suite is a wonderful way of getting a sense of it in tones because it has one of the movements here. They are sunrise, the painted desert, on the trail, sunset, and then cloudburst, one of the great musical storms. It's wonderful fun. And then, as if you get older and you, you know, have some sort of musical inclination, as I did as a percussionist, you actually get to play it and you realize that it's very virtuosic and extremely difficult. I mean, there are parts of it you know, where the string parts are virtually unplayable. It's very, very hard and tricky, and that makes it all the more fun. It really requires a virtuoso orchestra to pull it off properly. And one of the things that's always sort of bothered me as I've gotten older is that, you know, people really poo-poo the Grand Canyon Suite, especially American classical music listeners. Yes, it tends to be a pops piece, you know, for pops concerts, popular concerts. I always, you know, wondered at that term, popular concert. So what's, what's wrong with a popular concert? It's like, what are the other concerts supposed to be? Miserable concerts? You know, you know, snotty concerts? Rarified concerts? I mean, what do you call them? I mean, yes, it's a pop's favorite. It truly is, and rightly so, because audiences tend to love it. And there's no harm in that. But what really gets me about it is that Americans are so insecure about their own musical patrimony that they, that they re really dismiss things far too quickly. I mean, do you honestly think that this is any worse than, say, the Harayano Suite or the Lieutenant KJ Suite that often comes with the Harayano Suite or the Nutcracker Suite or any, any one of a bazillion other suites taken from ballets and stage things, the Pierre Gintz Suites? I mean, you know, any of Sibelius' Suites, you know, there's just tons of this stuff. There really is. And it's... This is as good as any of it. It really is. It's a wonderful piece. Why not just celebrate it and be proud of it instead of saying, oh, well, it's a pops piece. Oh, yeah, heaven forbid. Yes. I don't know. So the classical music culture is so messed up, and it's particularly messed up here in the U.S. because of you know excessive worship of all things non-American. 
And it's, it's a terrible mistake. It doesn't mean that you have to be a nationalist jerk about it and witlessly admire things because they're American. That's just as bad in a way. But good music is good music. And the Grand Canyon Suite is good music. And this recording from Eugene Ormandy, the Philadelphia Orchestra, who recorded it multiple times, um, is, is just fantastic. Fantastic. Oh, I love this performance because you need a great orchestra to do it. And Philadelphia is a great orchestra and it comes with a very fine American in Paris, kind of laid back, but very lush and enjoyable. And the symphonic portrait of Porgy and Bess, which is just a lovely arrangement. This is not Gershwin's suite. Gershwin made his own suite called Catfish Row, which I still like in preference to this, I must say. But, you know, yeah, it's okay. You got all the big tunes here and it's wonderful. And, you know, I, what's wrong with this stuff? Absolutely nothing, especially when Ormandy and Philadelphia get their hands on it and play it to the nines. So my Desert Island classic, if you want to call it that, I mean, I hate that phrase, Desert Island. First of all, I need a very big island. Second of all, why does it have to be a desert island? Why can't it be a really attractive, lovely resort island with a swimming pool and a five-star hotel and gourmet cuisine? I'd take that island with my record collection. That would be even better. So get your graffé, your Grand Canyon suite, and just wallow in it, for heaven's sake, shamelessly, hedonistically, without any embarrassment embarrassment. Be proud of it. Love it, my friends. Love it. It's wonderful, wonderful music. So keep on listening, friends. Thank you so much for joining me for Dave's Faves. Dave's Faves. And just as a note, the playlist for Dave's Faves, which I'm accumulating, of which this is video number four, is at the bottom of every one of these videos. So if you want to just sample the rest of them, because they're all pretty short and, and, and hopefully easy to take in, you can just follow the link at the bottom of the video. Bye-bye. I'll talk to you next time.